lesson data handling class 7 subject mathematics chapter 3 and this is the part 1 so what do we mean by data data is nothing but when you collect any information okay so based on any observation is called as data usually data will be in numerical form okay so let's look at the introduction so example of numeric data so what do you mean by numeric data i have already told you that data is nothing but the information that you have collected it can be any information okay in our day to day life let us look at few examples here marks obtained by all 7th standard students in the last maths test okay that is a data because you have collected some information regarding 7th standard students maths test okay so that is a data and the number of runs you scored in the last 10 cricket games. So, it represents the number of runs you have scored in the last 10 cricket games. And the third example is total rainfall in Hosadoddi in millimeter for each day of December 2020. So, when you collect every day's data of rainfall in Hosadoddi, so that is also called as numeric data. And age in years of all teachers of the school of, you just think of Sai Krishna Vidya Mandir, of all the teachers age, okay. So, that is also a data because it is having some information regarding the teacher's age. Is it clear children? So, what you have to do? When data is collected, it should be done based on the specific information needed from that data. You can't collect a data which is not useful. Okay, for example, we, we have taken the age of the teachers. Okay, so you have to take the age of a teacher. So, from that, some information regarding the age of a teacher should be needed. Is it clear? So, you can't collect a data however you want. You have to collect a data based on some specific information needed from that data. Is it clear, children? And the second point is, once the data is collected, it should be organized and presented in a neat way to interpret the data. Okay. So, it has to be organized properly. Like all the teachers age. Right. So, you have to write everything in years only. You can't write in months or days. Then it will be some other different value and all. If it is in years and if it is in alphabetical order and all, you can organize it in different ways. Okay, once the data is collected. First point is what? You have to collect a data from which some specific information should be needed from that data. And second point is, once the data is collected, it has to be organized and presented in a proper way. And the third point is, it can be presented as graphs, chart, tables, etc. And why do you want graph, charts and all? It is very easy to Analyze the data and capture it. You can visualize the data properly, right, when it is in a graph format. So, bar graph. So, can you just look at here in the x axis, it is apple, orange, banana, jackfruit, blueberry, and grapes. What are all these? They are grapes, right? And in the y axis, there are few numbers 0, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So, find the most popular fruit from the bar graph shown. So, it's very easy to identify the most popular fruit, right? You just think that the, these numbers are the number of people who are liking it, okay? So, you can look at the diagram and you can say easily, right? Double bar graph. So, this is another type of a bar graph where you use two pair of bars okay two bars or a pair of bars for each data see let's take an example here marks in english and maths so you are representing a english and maths marks okay so here the first one represents the english and the second diagram second bar graph second graph represents the maths okay so this color represents english is it clear children? Light purple and the dark purple represents maths. So, choose a scale and interval for the vertical axis. Draw a pair of bars for each data. 
use different colors to show different types. So here we have used light purple and dark purple to use English and maths respectively. So label the axis and give the graph a title. Is it clear children? Finally, you must make a key to show what each bar represents. So here it is in first quarter, second quarter, third quarter and fourth quarter, the English and ma maths marks are scored. Okay. So when is the English mark scored highest? It is in the third quarter. Right children? You can see in third quarter, it is 90 marks. Right? And you can see which is the lowest one in fourth quarter. It is 20 marks and in first quarter also it is 20 marks. So by looking at the graph, it is very easy to analyze the data. Description of data. Let's take an example here. The teacher notes that the 10 students in his classroom scored the following marks in maths. So these are the 10 marks which are scored by 10 students in maths subjects. Subject. So he can describe this data in various ways. How can he describe? He can say that the lowest marks is 25 and the highest marks is 90. Yes or no? Just by looking at this information, you can say that the lowest mark is 25 and the highest mark is 90. Yes or no? And the range of the mark is 90 minus 25, which means what? Highest marks minus lowest mark give the range. Is it clear? So 65 is the range. Which means what? There are many students who are scoring less marks and who are scoring high marks. So the range is 65. There is a student who scores very less marks and there is a student who scores highest marks. So the range is more here. That is 65 marks is the range. Okay. So always to calculate range, you have to subtract the High, lowest mark from highest mark. Okay. So the range is a measure of the spread of the data. So if the same students had scored in Balvika's test. Okay. So this is the maths test which we have discussed. And in Balvika's test, the lowest is 88 and the highest is 96. So what is the lowest marks? 88 marks. And the highest is 96 marks. So range is what? You have to subtract the 96 and 88. 88 from 96. So, which is 96 minus 88. It is 8 marks. Therefore, the range is very less. Wherever the range is very less, we can say that all are performing about the same. Is it clear? Where the range is more, which means that there is a student who scores very less marks and there is a student who scores very high marks. If, there is, if the range is very small number, then we can say that almost all are performing about the same. Is it clear children? I hope you have understood the introduction of data handling. So let's continue in next class. Thank you children.